Welcome to the uh, all new Sick for the Hunt podcast with your host, Josh Grant and Josh. Yeah, yeah well, guys, uh, this is the all light Nate said. This is the all new Sick for the Hunt podcast. Grant, myself, and Nate ran the Pure Whitetail podcast for about a year, did an absolutely terrible job at that. Yeah. We, were, we were horrible. So, because uh, trying to wrangle you two in the same room at the same time to record one is like trying to herd cats. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I agree. It was our fault. That's why I said we were terrible. I meant me and Grant, not you. Okay. Uh, but we, we were terrible. We introduced, introduced tonight our new boss. Yeah. It's going to uh, keep us in track. So, the the one Josh McAllister, um, formerly with uh, his own show Learning Curve, is now a part of Sick for the Hunt and Pure Whitetail. So um, he will be basically running the show for Sick for the Hunt from here on out. He's already making decisions, and uh, we like it. Yep, yep. Well, that's so, a good change. Yeah, you know, yeah. I think uh, over time we all evolve. Why can't I have a voice like Josh's? Yeah, don't screw no. up. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a good change, you know. <laughs> Dang, God, I wish I had a voice like that. Anyway, go ahead. Um, yeah, it's a good change. You know, um, I love, you know, hunting and filming and photography and um, been doing this for a long time. And Would you, know, you like to tell everybody, just give them a background of where you got started filming? Yeah, so I started – I grew up like a lot of guys did years ago, tinkering with cameras, and I loved to hunt. I grew up in an area where there was a lot of bow hunters, a lot of hardcore whitetail hunters. Southern Ohio is probably, I mean, you hear it's a pretty good place to hunt, but there's a lot of hardcore, legit bow hunters down there. Kind of reminds me of Southern Iowa. Yeah, it does. They know their stuff. They kill big deer. <clears throat> and I grew up around those those guys, and I started uh, actually my ex brother in law. We we uh, I think it was just to get in good with my sister, <laughs> but he uh, we I started filming him, you know, just for just for fun. And one thing led to another, and started um, started listening to the old timers that did it back in the day. And one thing led to another, and I started incorporating video resumes and sending them to companies of some of the work I did and one thing led to another and I started freelance freelancing for several big companies in the industry. That was back in the prime time buck days with Hunter specialties and then did some stuff for some other big name uh, people in the industry. And I did that for a while. And after doing that, I just, I didn't get to hunt as much as I normally would have liked. And I said, man, I got, I got to have a change. So again, you know, after doing that for a while started um, hunting and filming myself and that's where it led into doing my own show, all digital based, and had a great gr- group of guys down there that we all did it with. And that's where kind of introduced with you guys back yep. in 2018, I believe. That was our first year. I called Josh up. And here we are today, you know, almost five years later. Yeah, that's crazy how, how it worked out. You know, I mean, who would have thought that? this is where we would be at right now. Well, most people you think about when they give you call up, say, Hey, I like your stuff. I like your product. This is what I can do for you. This is what we're going to do. How many times do you really think and go, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. I, don't, I right. don't know. Right. But, you know, I'm, it's <clears throat> being educational and, and passing on good information to people that's willing to learn. That's, you know, I didn't have a lot of people that did that other than my grandpa. And I thought, you know, <clears throat> it's, that's what I really enjoy doing. It's right. passing on information that will help people become better hunters. Right. And, uh, yeah. You think you could help these two? No, there's no help (laughs) in these two guys. Absolutely not. Grant's, listen, Josh is, you know, Josh is crossing over the fence. Grant's never going to cross the fence. It ain't happening. Hey, I just got got bad luck. I I, I have just determined to it that I've got bad luck when it comes to hunting. What you, how many days did you hunt in a row in Ohio? 16? 15 days, 16 sits. 15 days, 16 sits. Yep. And I've seen those. And, and the 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 one day that you didn't go in between all that. No, he came in the morning. Oh, that's right. Yeah. On a Saturday morning. That's right. So then I went. Then I went to hunting Sunday morning, Monday morning. Then I got sick. Right. Yeah. That's right. And that's what kind of ended me. Yeah. You know, people yeah. don't see all the behind the scenes stuff. No. Right. <clears throat> you know, we've did. We, we've all dealt with um, filming our hunts or traveling and and and. 
They just don't see all the behind the scenes stuff that you yeah. can wrap. I mean, think about it. Traditionally, in a t- television show, you're looking at 30 minutes, right? Or 22, 23 22, minutes. 22, yeah. 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 Now you're looking at what's people want. Everybody's attention spans grown shorter. So yep. now you're trying to. You can't portray that six, seven, no. eight, nine minutes. Well, you, you know, can't. like you're talking about the things that people never see. For instance, nobody will ever see that I made two trips to Kansas this year, right? Come back empty-handed, had great hunts, passed some great bucks. You need, but I was, you need a confidence man in the blind with you, didn't you? <laughs> That's right. So, I mean, seen some phenomenal bucks. Didn't take the shot on a couple because I felt they was a little too far away. I had a muzzleloader tag in Kansas this year. And I made two trips out there, you know, so people will never see that. Mm-hmm. You know, people will never see how many hunts we go on and are not successful. They just see the ones that we are successful because yeah. yeah. it's – you can't entertain people without a kill, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. I mean, that's just the way it is. It's it's pretty tough nowadays, especially with everybody's attention span. <clears throat> it's it's really hard. Yeah. So I mean, you can watch it on YouTube now, where people fast forward to the kill. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They just fa- yeah. they fast forward to it, you know. So I mean, things that's, have, that's things have definitely is. changed, and <clears throat> the way television and and media has went. And right. It gets tough to tell us to tell the, the whole story oh, sometimes. Yeah. Yep. So yep. you can do the greatest filming in the world, and they're going f- they're going to skip through it just to see. And that's kill. why I'm kind of I'm I'm really excited about the Sick for the Hunt podcast. You know, we're going to be able to dive into a lot of uh, hunt related. Um, strategies, you yeah, know, right. oh, um, yeah. getting into a lot of different things with white, not only white tails, but well, I, with I got, turkeys. I, and I've got a question. Then. Oh boy, Saturday I have five bucks show up. They like bucks. Take my daughter Sunday. No bucks. Yeah. What am I, what am I doing wrong? <laughs> you didn't go Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you're doing wrong. <laughs> I mean, there was two good shooters, and the rest of them, you know, are young bucks. But as my daughter, and she's never shot one, and I'm like, yep. we're going in. We're going to get it. Right, we're, we're I know. Getting, like I had full confidence. I know, yeah, uh, it, it, and that's kind of like the way your season's been is, oh. you know, it's you know I hate to say it, but it's been a day late, dollar short. You know, you're like, all right, I'm going, I can go this day, yep. you know, I can go this day, I can't go this day, and it's like been bad timing for you. Like the yes. day you can't go is when they show up, and then when you do, and you're not bumping them. No, you're not bumping them when you're going in. They're not smelling you because there's plenty of other deer in the field. It's yeah. just been that you know, quote unquote shooter that you want has not showed up while you've been there. And it ain't, I don't think it's anything that you're doing wrong because. Well, no, I've walked, I've walked in every different direction in the world. Cause I'm like, am I, are they smell me when I walk right. in around the field this way? So I'm going to come down the field this way, or I'm going to walk straight down the center of the field. Right. And you no, know, I always got deer out there in front of me. So I know it's not that. It's just, yep. I'm bad. That's the cool thing about I'm bad luck. About hunting in general is trying to figure these things out. Yeah. New properties, different years, you know, things change from year on year out, from food sources to human pressure to, man, that's. We do have that a lot. Yeah. We got a lot of human pressure around here. I mean, it's it's insane. Uh, I know it might be a little different where you're at because you're more, how, how far are you away from us here? In- uh, I'm down in the Pike, Adam, Soda County area, which is just about 20 minutes north of the Ohio River. So you're starting to get into a lot of the Appalachian hills down there. Right, right. And <clears throat> you're starting to get in towards Adams County, which is kind of like they call Little Iowa. Yeah, right, That's exactly. big Amish country. Yep, yep. But, I mean, it's pressured. Don't get me wrong. It is getting pressured. Leasing starting to really get into that area and start to take over. But um, I, I just, you know, the I think the one thing that we deal with in our small little area here in Middletown, Ohio, and Middletown, Germantown area is what we're dealing with, and it's and, and is corn piles. Mm-hmm. I mean, there is an insane amount of corn piles in a small mm-hmm. area. Yeah. So I feel like the you know back in the day when you poured corn out, mm-hmm. you would attract a ton of a ton of deer. Right. You know, you would have twenty different bucks coming, mm-hmm. and I'm talking like fifteen years ago. I mean, now I'm with you, if I were right. Over it, yeah, behind, 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 yeah, behind the house. It used to be tons, tons of bucks. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, look at all the big ones I shot back there. Shot yeah. all kinds of big deer back there. Now, huh? Good luck. I mean, and it's because everybody's feeding. You know, I, I, I hate to say it. Yeah. But, you know, you're gonna say it. I hate to say <laughs> Just it. Just did. Already said it. Yeah, yeah. I already said it. But, already said it. You know, if, if I think our hunting would improve, if it, you know, I felt like. Back in the day, okay, I've been bow hunting Ohio for a long, long time, you know, 30 years. 
back in the day, the hunting was better. Mm. The deer were was not as nocturnal as they are now, and I think one of the major contributing factors to being nocturnal. Now, I don't want any everybody to get the wrong idea. I'm not against baiting because no. I do it. You ha- yeah. and the sad thing about it is, if you don't do it now, you ain't gonna see nothing. Yeah, that's one of the thing about you know, you know, being a hunter, a bow hunter, and being sick for the hunt. Right? You know, right. you have to adapt. Um, to the hunt you have right. to adapt to your areas right you know and where i hunt i hunt a lot of different public land a lot of private land and i mix it up and a lot of that is due to what's around me mm-hmm. um, food sources human pressure uh, i feed a lot on several different places and then i also march my rear end back in the public right. by foot two miles mm-hmm. <clears throat> and it's just I, i'm a type of guy that i don't leave all my eggs in one basket i've always said that yeah things change from year to year out and but it is <clears throat> you know around here especially with regulations um you know it's become tougher yeah it's becoming tougher to to yep. pattern um a good mature whitetail buck and it makes it tougher for sure so a guy's really got his work cut out and 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 the the buck and here's the what else i feel to take that you know i I think all the feeding doesn't it's contributed to them being more nocturnal but i also think it's contributing to them not having to be on a pattern because they can go anywhere for food well Mm -hmm. in a a one square mile that oh where i hunt i there's probably i'll give you a prime example I'm pretty good friends with everybody in my area. You yeah, know, we, yeah. we, we're we not, we all get along, share information, because we mm-hmm. all help each other out just as much as mm-hmm. we hurt each other. I always right. felt that. Yeah. You know, there's some people that's secretive, but a lot of times you can help each other out. You don't want to be hunting a ghost, right, sometimes? Right. right. So we share information back and forth. And I know for a fact, right now, in a two-square-mile area, there's 19 corn piles. Yeah. I, I would. 19. So it, it's, yep. and, and I'm not going to beat a dead horse, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about it, because um i I do it uh a lot of us do it oh yeah you have to adapt to your areas and and what's a lot of times if you don't do it you're out of the game and of course a lot of guys are due to time and work right you know what i mean from your jobs you you, if that's that's what you got to do to shoot a big deer then that's what you're going to do well if that's what i got to do then i'm going to do it right and i mean i mean and in this time of year food's king right if Mm -hmm. you don't have if you don't have a big food plot Mm -hmm. you know we're fortunate enough that we have the equipment to put in food plots right but uh, the corn's a poor man's food plot. That's Absolutely. the way that I look at it. You know, I mean, everybody and and t- and we, me and Grant, know because we do both. Corn pouring out corn on the ground is a lot more work than putting in a food plot. Yep. Oh, I mean, yeah. a lot more work. When you go, when you're talking about on a yearly, uh, a yearly basis. Corn will way outwork you than put well, food. Well, on. I think that's why Nate's got so big. Nate does all the. Nate puts it all out, don't he? <laughs> yeah. He's, you guys pay him to go put. I see, that's why his arms are getting so big. That's right. <laughs> they said we want corn piles like DGs. That's right. Generals. That's right. <laughs> that's right. That's what I feel like our area is. It's like there's a corn. Yeah. There's as many corn piles as there are Dollar Generals. But you know, I mean it. But I think that's what's contributed to them being because all all you got. to you know, a big, fully mature, which I'm calling a fully mature five plus year old buck. All he's got to do is get busted once on a corn pile, mm-hmm. walk in there in the daylight, smell the wrong, smell the wrong thing, human, and then boom, he's nocturnal. Around here, anyway, that's that's this, you know, our little area. You got to think too. How many times do you see a guy or a gal on social media or on some other digital platform? you know, self filming their self, shoot a deer over feed, right? Oh yeah. And everybody, you know, gives them criticism. Yep. Well, it's it's making it easier for them to document the hunt. Right. It's oh, very, yeah. very, very difficult to solo film yourself without a bait pond. Without it, it's very, very, very difficult. difficult. Yep. 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 And so when you get on these platforms and you're watching these hunts, you can't <laughs> You can't diss the guy or the no. gal for doing it. I mean, he's out there busting his butt, or she's out there busting her butt, yep. trying to get it done that way. So that's why I said I usually keep my opinions, you know, to myself on that stuff. Oh, you're, and, not, and, you're and, not allowed to keep them here. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You, yeah, you got to let it all out. You know, like I said, you know, we're we're definitely not against it because we no. do it. You know, and yeah. like the the velvet buck I shot in Kentucky, yeah, over a corn pile. Grant, yeah. if we didn't have a corn pile, would we have shot a deer? 
No, I had yeah. I had a rock star concert going next to me <laughs> down there. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. did. I, I told you, but I see my luck bad. Yeah. We were down there, spent the night in a rainstorm yeah. inside. You guys spent the night in baronet blinds for yes. how many hours? 30, 31 straight hours. And that right there is a prime example of this podcast. <laughs> whatever it takes. And us telling you guys mm-hmm. that's listening right now. That we do whatever it takes and legal yep. means yes. yep. to get the job done. Right. Well, at five thirty in the morning, he was standing <laughs> in front of me. Right. And I, you know, because I had the windows zipped up, and yep. you know, I I was asleep. And a lot of that depends on the area, like we talked about before. Is every every area is different with pressure and and um, regulations, whether you can feed, whether you can't. Yep. Just depends. And sometimes, you know, you got to do whatever it takes to put yourself in that position. Right. And that's just dealing with whitetail. <laughs> and man. and when you do whatever it takes, there's still outside factors that can affect your hunt. Like, oh. for instance, you know, we went down there. I had, like, two bucks that I could I could shoot that were coming in the daylight to my blind. This is opening weekend in Kentucky. Grant had, like, eight. I mean, we it was, like, just a no-brainer. Grant was going to kill one. First evening – I was no like, doubter. What am I going to do? Josh, Josh is going to stay in, and I'm going to, I'm going to have to deal with this deer by myself. I want to go to the store or something to get ice. Yep. Come yep. back, and I'll sleep in the truck and make sure and wait on Josh because you were way back on the one side. Oh, I was yeah. back on the other side, and I was like, I, you know, I was trying to figure out because it was a guarantee. Yep. And here comes the first truck down the dead end road, and then here comes another truck. Then ACDC started. <laughs> yep. It was Labor Day weekend. <laughs> and yep. uh, they had a party. That was at the point where I was like, I'm just going to go out blind and go party with him. Yeah. <laughs> I mean. I mean, we're talking like, what, 100 yards from you? Oh, it was terrible. Yeah, 100 yards. Yeah, it was bad. It was bad. <laughs> yeah, it was bad. <laughs> but Yeah, and we, you know, we couldn't communicate with each other. So I didn't know how his hunt was going. He didn't know how my hunt was going. My hunt was going great. I was seeing a ton of deer, a ton of turkeys, and and – Grant was just listening to a rock concert. <laughs> yeah. It was rock. And Some I, people, you know, you, you can't win for losing. No. Oh, yeah. And that's but you can you can go and have a streak of a great great years and then all of a sudden I don't care what you do, mm-hmm. how good of entry and exit, you know, you do, how good your scent control is, how much you scout, how much you utilize trail cameras, how much you play the win. At the end of the day, it's bow hunting, and some years just aren't your year. Right. Yep. Right. Uh, this wasn't my year. I'm getting ready. We're getting ready to change that. Yeah. 2023, we start in Mississippi. Yep. And we're going to change it there. Yep. I actually get to go to Iowa, so I'm leaving for Iowa on uh, Tuesday. So January the 3rd, I'm headed to Iowa. January 3rd will be my first night in the blind. Um, very, very fortunate to be able to hunt the ground that I do in southern Iowa. Speaking of southern Iowa, southern Iowa is um, – it is just on a whole nother level yeah. than any other place that I've hunted. I can't, I don't even know how many States I've hunted now. It's, it's a lot, but, um, probably half of the country. Um, but Southern Iowa, just not, when you're talking whitetails, nothing compares. I mean, nothing. I've Thank been you. there three times in 09, 2013 and 2018. And as the years go by, the draw gets tougher. You yeah. Know? Oh yeah, for sure. But three years uh, two different um, landowners with mm-hmm. leases and 160s. I shot a 160 within the second day yeah. of those mm-hmm. three hunts. I mean, yep. it is an absolutely different world out there. It, yeah, no, no, nothing else Nothing else Mm-mm. compares to it. Mm-mm, I nothing. mean, you know, um, I've had a, a lot of success, and Grant's been on a lot of these hunts with me over the last 10 or so years, but a lot of success in North Dakota. Uh, we see a lot of deer, but – southern iowa is still the king man i mean it's it, i remember the first time that i took grant out there and i was like man you're just not going to believe the amount of deer we're going to see and he's like okay okay but you know you you can you can tell the story as many times as you want but unless yeah. the person sitting beside you and he was just blown we, away. I mean, yeah, remember the first night i was having to fit on you oh yeah he was trying to get me to pull the trigger it was like i mean this deer well he it was, was like a nine or eight or nine year old deer. <laughs> he was ancient he, he was, was white faced white faces walked in like he was sore as can be i'm like I mean, it wasn't a very big deer, but... You know, 140, first, probably yeah. 140. My first the time first year there. I went was back way before 09, and a, a, a couple of friends of mine was going out there, and they said, we're going to go shed hunt. You want to go? And I said, sure. I didn't know what I was getting myself into. We found 70 sheds in two days. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's insane. That was when it woke me up and go, what have I been missing all these years? So right. that's when I started really focusing more time and effort, and we would go shed hunt every 
February, March, and pull 60, 70 sheds in two days. Yeah. Wow. And then we started drawing tags. And like I said, if, if you ever get a chance, anybody oh, that's it, listening to go out there once in yeah. your life, it might take four or five years probably now to get a tag, depending on the zone that you go hunt. Yeah. But yeah, it is unreal. Yeah, if you're trying to get zone five down in that southeast Iowa, you good luck. I mean, it's going to be five. Like Josh said, it'll be five years, five, maybe even six years. Yeah, yeah they've changed it. Just like all the states, is it's getting harder and harder. COVID made that happen. Um, it's harder in Montana, harder everywhere, you know, but, but Iowa, you know, when I first went to Iowa, uh, the first year I hunted, it was 13. Second day I killed a 172 and five eights. And I'm like, all right, what I got to do? That was obviously before pure whitetail. And, and I'm like, all right, what, let me, let, what jobs are around here? I got to move here. You know, I mean, that'll make places like that will make you think, you know, when a lot of your big whitetail hunters have moved to Iowa. They have, yeah. Yeah. And um, that's where it's at. You yeah. know, Ohio, um, I, I would compare to Iowa if you change just a few of the regulations. Mm-hmm. I think we would be right there. Yep. We have the deer. We have the, I, I tell you, I tell you who, a state that, could be better than Iowa if they would change the regulation. That's Kentucky. Mm-hmm. Kentucky would – I think Kentucky would be king. It, they The rifle hunt during the rut yep. is it's, absolutely it's, a killer for that yeah, state. It's, it's not a good idea. And they still kill giants down yep. there, a lot of yep. them. And, I mean, the the farm that Grant and I leased this year um, down there, I mean, it was loaded. Oh, um, man. I mean, it was, it was insane. It, it was loaded. Coming. Yeah. And, um, you know, I got fortunate, you know, I – you know, people get to see that on the sick for the hunt episode mm-hmm. here soon. But I was very, very blessed to kill a to kill a good velvet buck. And Grant had an eight pointer coming in um, to his to his blind that was, I mean, it was one sixties. Yeah, that's the one I said about standing in front of me at five thirty in the morning. <laughs> yeah, and it, know, was, it was special. We've got here. some really cool episodes um, coming out here real short. They're gonna be yep. it's gonna be some really cool stuff. Yeah. Um, some good strategies behind the hunt, behind the hunts. Yep. Um, a lot of whatever it takes type deals. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we, yeah. we do. We do. We got some really cool hunts. We got, so what do we got coming up? We got my hunt and my velvet hunt in Kentucky. Um, uh, we've got your Ohio hunt. Mm-hmm. That's and, a, that's a banger. Just how it all went down just yep. from A to Z and, and the process the, behind all that hunt. Then we've got uh, Josh. Uh, we've got uh, got, tre- you, got you shirtless in a blind in Kentucky. Got me, sure, yeah. I even went, <laughs> our, our, our views are going to go down. <laughs> see that. Uh, we got. Um, I filmed Trev Stewart in Montana. Oh yeah, That's in below in below zero. Mm-hmm. Filmed Heather, my wife Heather, in Montana below zero. Filmed Terry Sievertson shooting a buck at almost nine hundred yards. Um, and then I got him shooting a doe. And then um, what else we got? I uh, got the. The OG Fiskajan, uh trampling miles back into public, yep. setting in negative degree temperatures all day long for a buck. That's why I was out there. <laughs> yeah, that was cold, man. He's an I mean, animal, it was man. Cold. He is. He's mm-hmm. an animal. He, he's a he's a whatever it takes kind of, kind oh, of yeah. guy. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, he gets it done. And by the way, um, Terry, my, you know my my buddy Terry Sievertson had Fiskajan's buck on camera <laughs> that he killed. Wow. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty neat. Yeah, it's uh, it's a different world, you know. Out when you get west of the Mississippi, uh, me and Grant, me and Grant say that all the time. Once you cross that Mississippi River, it's a different deer. Absolutely, different, hundred percent different deer. And and unless you've traveled before, you don't understand that. And and I only you got to travel to as far as and I'd filmed back in the day in other places such as Kansas and New Mexico and stuff like that on whitetail and elk hunts. But actually getting the hunt, you know, a couple years ago when I went out there with Justin in North North Dakota. Wow. That Definitely. was before a EHD hit, you know, before yeah. the numbers was really high. Mm-hmm. You want to talk about that was something, mm-hmm. a sight to see. Yep. 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 When you there. set, you know, one set, you know, you're seeing over 100 deer. Oh, easily. Yeah. And, you, you you know, here, you know, if you see, to me, in my, in our area, if you see five deer, you mm-hmm. had a good set. Yeah. And out there, you're seeing 100, 150 deer. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, coming to an alfalfa field at night, you know, yeah. in the evening. You're like, and it's just a parade of deer walking by you. In in Ohio, where we're at, you're you're gonna lucky to get one opportunity, let alone two. Yeah, a year yeah. when you're when you're right. deer hunting, whether gun or bow, that's what you're gonna look at. When you go out west, west of the Mississippi, Iowa, Missouri, North Dakota, Kansas, places like that, 
and you have an inkling of you, you know what you're doing when right. it comes to hunting, you're going to have several opportunities that you're right. at decent bucks. You know, and that kind of brings up to the up to the point. You know, I seen everybody's always posting. You know, who's the best bow hunter? Who's but well, and then they, of course they first of all they <laughs> name all these celebrities. I'm yeah. like. People, come on. There's so many guys out there, I promise you. There's so yep. many guys out there right now that you've never, ever heard of right. before, and you never will. Right. That's yep. just the way they pretend, they, yep. they prefer to keep it. Right. Um, and a lot of it has to do with your area. There's so many variables, right, yep. that goes right. into who mm-hmm. – who, and, and I guess I don't – I get wore out when I hear that is <clears throat> there's so many variables that goes into who is the best hunter. I, I just yep. – yeah, you can't. There's the, so much the, to gauge the, off be, that. the best yeah. bow hunter is probably some <laughs> some dude in the the hills of West Virginia that nobody's ever heard of, and nobody ever will. He ain't got yeah. Facebook, he yeah. ain't, you know. Yeah, and he probably gets it done. Oh yeah, year in year out. That's the guy that's probably the best. But it definitely ain't none of these, you know, so quote unquote celebrities. It definitely ain't none of us that get to go to all the you know the good quote unquote the good places. Even mm-hmm. though we get it consistently get it done on public you know, a lot of the times, but we're, st- when we do get it done on public, we're in areas that oh, it, good, good. it is good public areas, you know, there's a, th- but you know, for people to say that it's, you know, like I seen one the other day, all, oh, you know, so-and-so with, you know, celebrity hunters that got to be the best bow hunter to ever live. I'm like, mm, come on, man. <laughs> you know, you're like, they've got every opportunity in the world you know, that's manicured food plots and all this stuff, you know. But I, I feel like the – I feel like in a certain ways it's gotten easier. Yeah. It's because – Well, there's a lot of information at your at your fingertips. And nowadays, well, what I mean – We didn't have back what in the I mean, What I mean is let's plant a five-acre food plot. Let's bulldoze the trees down all around it pile the bull you know use a bulldozer to pile it up on all sides to where they can only walk into the field one way and that's the yeah. wind in your favor way mm-hmm. and let's set in a muddy you know a mu- big yeah. muddy blind uh hard-sided blind and wait for them to come out and let's shoot them with a gun yeah you know and again i'm not knocking it because yeah. that's what i'm doing next week yeah there's right? so many there's so many right. things that's changed over the years with technology and and everybody's what you have at your fingertips, you know, right. whether that be you know, on X, on hunt, you know, at certain apps to figure out your position and, um, scouting cameras, cameras, cellular yep. uh, cameras, yep. um, heated, bl- heated blinds to allow you to be in conditions that you didn't hunt years ago in, right. or whether it be a certain type of muzzleloader or gun that reaches out to several hundred yards yep. that you didn't have back in the day, mm-hmm. or whether you're a crossbow guy, uh, that can shoot a hundred yards, I mean, there's so much things that right that, that we have nowadays that we didn't back then that makes it a lot easier. Yep, it Not is easier. It's, it's yeah, it is easier. Yeah, I mean, there's no doubt about it. From when I started bow hunting to now, it's easier. Yeah, you know, somebody that that you know started hunting after trail cameras was already here and after all this stuff. You know, back in the day, you know, there heck, Google Earth wasn't even here. Mm-mm. There was there was no air, the star, there was no such thing as aerial photograph. You had get to you the, out. get you one of them Rand McNally Atlas catalogs. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. You yeah. know, stop at the convenience store and buy you the little fold out. You know, the little fold yeah. out paper. When you know, I mean, it, it it's definitely easier, but it doesn't mean that it's any less fun either. No, you know? absolutely not. And, every and I don't want anybody everybody to get the wrong idea because I take advantage of everything. Heck, I got Onyx on my truck screen now. Where yeah. you know. They just come out with that. I can hit yep. my Onyx on CarPlay. Yeah, they got the Apple CarPlay now. Me and Grant was driving down the road last night. As a matter of fact, I said, hey, check this out. You can drive down the road, and Onyx is right on the truck screen. You yep. can just uh, – it's yep. amazing. Yep. You know, I mean, and, you know, cell cams, all that stuff. I love it all. We use it all, you know, but it's definitely easier. You know, long-range muzzle loaders, I put it, we put an order in for one. So, yep. you know, I mean – Whatever it takes. That just makes know. that's you know that's what makes us sick for the hunt. You but, know what I mean? Oh, All those. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what's what's next? You know, yeah. What's, what's next, next around the corner? Yeah. I mean, yeah. who you know? Ten years ago, who would have ever dream that a, that we would all be sitting here with smartphones and get notifications on our phone of deer walking in? Yeah. Oh, I, yeah. I mean, no, you, you would have never. Well, I mean, that's pri- that's how that's that's what led me to be in the position I did. You know, this year on this year's hunt. Right. You know? Right. Uh, it was one of those years where 
the previous couple years, I took a hit in the area on, on big deer and I told all my friends, I said, man, I got to make an adjustment just because of what had happened. So I started scouting some old public land that I hunted back in, you know, 2001, 2002, set some sets up there, set some stands there, started running some cell cams on that, still stuck my guns and still hunted the properties that I did. And I just got on a, a really big, really big eight. And it was a unpredictable deer. It was one of those deer that you think, oh, it's, it's just they're unkillable. Right, right, you right. Can't, yep. You'll never run across, you know, when those deer show up once every week or two weeks and they're not, they don't spend the biggest majority of their time on your property. Right. Those yep. are tough to kill. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And Yeah, you know, that's what Grant had this year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, and he was a tough deer. He'd been that way his whole life. And all of a sudden, you know, I had two daylight pictures of him. And... I got off work that day on the on the twenty fourth, and it was seventy seven degrees that day. I mean, who, honestly, who would have probably wanted to right. hunt in seventy seven degrees? Right, and you know, in October, I'm like, my goodness. I got off of work, checked my cell cam app. There he was that morning for two and a half hours. That evening, I went in and practically shorts and a t shirt and Crocs and yeah, and shoddy, <laughs> you know. And but it was that. That, you know, most recent information that I had when I got out of work at 3 o'clock and checked my app, that there he is, yep. it's time to go get it done. Well, I mean, that's the same thing with us this year in, in Kentucky. If we wouldn't have had cell cams running, we, yeah. we would have not known where to go, you know, nothing, you know. I mean, it's just you know, technology is, is phenomenal. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm all I'm a hundred percent for it, you know, in in all aspect in all aspects because, you know, and I hear a lot of people saying, "Well, I'm not baiting, or I'm not doing this, or I'm not doing that." I'm like, buddy, you must have a lot more time than I do mm-hmm. if you just want to yeah. go out there and sit, you yeah. know. It's today's um, everybody's schedules are busier. Oh yeah, uh, life, and that's and that's fact. That's yeah. factual. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Life yeah. happens very fast. Um. And it just seems like we don't have the time that we used to. No, no. A lot busier. No. Life's yeah. a lot more hectic. Especially nowadays. if you got young kids. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, because it's ball practice, it's this, it's that, it's running back, running this, running mm-hmm. that. You know, I, you know, mine are grown now, but, man, I remember. You know, yeah. it was just like no time, you know, no time at all. But, you know, you got to make time for that. If that's what you like to do, you got to make time. But, man, the – um the technology is great, and you know, you know, we're fortunate to be partnered with Tacticam, and and uh, with the reveal just kind of like, it, it was kind of like, you know, there was other cell cams out, but when the reveal come out, it was like everybody got in the game because they made an affordable one that worked really good, well, and it's like everybody's in the game now. You think back with cell cams first come out to uh, to, to be available to. To people, three, four, five hundred dollars. Oh yeah. Well, the first one was like six or seven. Yeah, yeah. So and then not, it started coming. It down. just wasn't reasonable for a lot of people to go pay that for a trail camera. Now you can go out and buy a trail camera for eighty bucks, ninety dollars, uh-huh. and you can get a handful of them. Yeah. Oh yeah. So yeah, yeah. It made a big difference, you know. And you know, Tacticam was like the first one to come out and made an affordable. Because me and Grant was like, oh boy. You know, if they, because you know, me and Grant, we talked to Jeff, knew what was what was coming down the pipe, and he was like, "We're going to sell them for one nineteen ninety nine." Uh, me and Grant was like, "You do that, man. You're gonna you're gonna you're gonna own it." And yeah. and of course they do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. they're addicting. You know, yeah. trail cameras. Oh, uh, they're man. they're addicting. <laughs> yeah, it's very it's very. Addicting, I will say man. though, with with cellular trail cameras, I think a lot of people put too much. Mm-hmm. thought into it to mm-hmm. where there's some days with temperature and fronts you have to hunt regardless yeah of what your trail camera saying so if you're out there and you've got 10 15 20 scouting cameras and they're cellular cameras and you're waiting on that picture of that big giant to show up and you don't get that picture and you think ah, i just don't know i just don't think i'm going to get out there because of that you're making a big mistake because you got to be there when he yes. does show up yes or you're hunting one stand and and then your other camera goes off <laughs> in the same property and then your big eight standing up on the front part of the property yeah, yeah grand, and you're in the yeah. back that happened to you this year too i remember you yep. you i remember you messaging me and be like look at this crap you know <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah he yeah. was sitting in the back his big and his big shooter was in the front but yeah i mean that happens all the time you know i mean i think that's i i I like what you said josh about about 
just because your cameras are not going off don't mean you should go because, yeah. you know, they got to show up sometime. Mm -hmm. And if they ain't been showing up, heck, that's like the best time to go. Yeah. Because they, they're going to show up. I like know. cell cameras just as much as the next guy, and I use a lot of them. Mm -hmm. But also, I, I don't let that totally rely on where I'm going to hunt, when I'm going to hunt. I mean, right. it, yeah, it played a huge part into this year. So, so are you a uh, – how – okay, let me ask you this. You have DeerCast? Yes, I've got several different apps. Okay, so <clears throat> do you – are you – do you, is that what you're following? The only thing that I fo I'm following when I – I base – I can go back and look, uh, and I keep a journal of the last several years. I could go back probably since 2013, 14, I'm going to guess. I'd have to go back and look. But all of my successful hunts is probably is, yeah, based on weather fronts. Yep. 100%. At the end of the day, don't matter what app you use, what cell camera you use, um, what scent you use or what camo you use at the end of the day, weather trumps everything hundred percent in the whitetail woods. Yep. Yep. Actually in a lot of different aspects all, of hunting it, it, and, yep. and a lot of different game related hunting and fishing. Yes. Hunting and fishing. hundred percent. Yes. Weather trumps everything. Yep. You can play into the moon and all these factors but weather trumps everything. And yep. every successful hunt that I can ever remember, I can go back and think of that sp specific type of weather front. And that's yep. what I key on every single year. Mm -hmm. I can get people say, well, you didn't hunt very many days this year. But when I did hunt, though, right. what happened? Right. So I usually try to play weather um, fronts, pay attention to that. You know, that's that's one thing that I used to do when I, when I was a, a young bow hunter. I went every day I could, no matter what. Yeah. I didn't care about the wind. I didn't care about the weather, nothing. I went every day I could. But as I started getting older and I started studying more, reading more, and I was learning more on my own too, I was like, okay, well, you know, now, all right, my, winds ain't, my wind ain't perfect. I probably shouldn't go. Or, you know, it's, you know, 85 on October the 3rd. I probably shouldn't go you know, cause he's going to come in after dark, you know? So, yeah. And I think as you grow and mature as a hunter, you kind of start eliminating bad yep. days. And just like you said, you know, like if you just pick, I'd rather go on f the five right days mm -hmm. than 50, 50 yeah. days in a row. You know, yeah. uh, if you pick out them days, number one, you don't get burnt out and, and you're, you're more, focused when you're there too because you know you have a better opportunity when you pick them days to go and, and if the wind ain't perfect don't go you know i think that's what a lot of younger hunters do is they go they they're like well i gotta i gotta be out i can't kill them from the couch <laughs> well you can't yeah. kill them if the wind's blowing yeah. it right in their nose too yeah. you know no I, matter no matter i think i don't care what scent elimination you use i don't care what scent you use your chances drastically go down. I mean, like drastically if you're hunting the wrong, if you like, and a lot of, here's what a lot of people don't understand. Most, I don't want, I want to say most, I'm just going to say a lot of hunters still don't understand what it means to play the wind. Yeah. And I know this for a fact because I've talked to them. I'll be like, well, which is your wind? Well, I don't know. I was like, uh, is your wind predominantly from the West? Well, uh, then I'll be like, well, what? Where's your tree stand? Well, I, well, wh where's West? They mm -hmm. ask me. Where, mm -hmm. Well, I'm like, I don't know. Where's what? I mean, it 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 amazes me that how many people don't know direction. There's you know? a lot. You know, you can dive deeper when it comes to. I, I, I'm gonna, I guess, put a microscope on bow hunting. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're trying to get up close and personal, right? And put them in your lap. Get them within that 50, 40 yards barrier. Make a good ethical shot. Right. There's, there's things that you can even break down far further, and we'll talk about that in, in future podcasts. But you can, you know, when it comes to playing the wind, um, I think that I think terrain, playing the wind needs to be a whole podcast, yeah, and that goes into thermals. You know, you got to think about down where where I'm located at down there in Big Hill Country. Yep, yep. When you get down in Eastern Kentucky, Southern Ohio, West Virginia, places like that, Tennessee. Yep. Uh, you, and even some places in Missouri, when you're starting to get into some bigger hills, and steeper terrain, that's where you start getting into thermals. And sometimes, you know, depending on the property, 
it will take you several years going in there to learn. Right. Um, Absolutely. Those things. Yep. You can't think, well, just automatic, automatically the wind's blowing this way. I bet you more than this 50% is, of the people that are listening right now have no idea what yeah. a thermal is. Yeah. And we'll break that down. You know, in future, we're just, we're just hitting, breezing the surface right now on that. But, you know, in the future podcast, we'll, we'll break that down and yep. talk about certain situations, mm-hmm. you know, specifically some hunts down my area that I've been a part of or actually involving myself in a situation where what the thermals did and using the terrain and right. things like that. Right. It takes, sometimes it takes a few years to learn a property. Yep, absolutely. And what the wind does and thermals and, and all yep. that stuff. Yeah. I think, I think if we could cover that in the future, like edu- ed- just basic education on fundamentals, mm-hmm. basic fundamentals. I mean, it, it it's cause we take it for granted. You know, back when I was a, a brand new bow hunter, I didn't I didn't know that stuff, right? You've got to you've got to learn it, right? Mm-hmm. You you've you you've got to live it. You got to learn it. And I'll tell you when I in '06 was when I when I felt like I took a a, a step, and I remember this. I felt like it's where I took a step at being a better bow hunter was in '06, and it was just coincidentally. After that is when I started killing bigger deer. And it was my first trip to North Dakota to hunt with Terry Severson. And the way he explained to me how to hunt the wind, and I ha- I promise you, I have re- it from about 92 up to 06, I had read every single article of every single bow hunting magazine, North American Whitetail, all of them. But I never understood it until he explained it to me this way was when he explained to me how to hunt the wind effectively, I'm like, boom, it just clicked. And I had read every article there is, you know, here's what you do this time. There's what you do this time, but it never made sense until he explained it to me this way. And I, you know, I think we could, you know, I think in a future podcast, we need to dive into that and explain that to people because I think people are craving that knowledge right now there is no show out okay magazines are a thing of the past right nobody reads magazine articles anymore no show basically says this is what this is where you need to sit Mm -hmm. you know let's say my tree stands here the wind's blowing this way this is the way that deer usually coming from do i hunt the no no show is explaining it in detail of how to do it you know and i think we could really help a lot of people if we're like hey this is exactly what you need to do yeah. you know so and there, and there are certain certain circumstances also that you just have to go yeah absolutely you have to take care of your scent you have to yep. be very precautious on that and you just have to go yeah i did that uh <laughs> i did that quite a bit this year yep. i had bad wind but i, you, I still went yeah you, well, you and you still and you still had deer in front of you, you, didn't smell you. you. you got to yep. think about it. i mean everybody talks about deer. the wind and waiting for the right time right? right well maybe you look at the forecast and maybe the next right time's not for 10 days right right yeah especially if, during the rut absolutely yeah but you think you're gonna no? You're not gonna sit there and wait for ten days, right? No, because it's over. Yeah, that's what Grant would be like. What do you think? I'd be like, it's yeah. the rut. Yeah. All bets are off. You what? have to go. Throw caution to the wind, yeah. right? You have to just be as scent free as possible. Mm-hmm. You know, practice good scent control. Yeah. Uh, be good with your entry and exit, and j- you just have to go hunt. And right. sometimes I think people put too much thought into all these variables that everybody is preaching out there and uh, yep. sometimes they're just uh, there's just you just got to go <laughs> yeah you know like we've talked uh, you know we there's another thing you just said that i guarantee you a lot of people don't know what it means entry and exit yeah. it sounds so simple mm-hmm. and we understand it but there's a lot of guys out there that don't mm-hmm. i mean think about the the new guy that's just getting into it well, what's entry and exit mean? Yeah. You know, what's a therm- what's thermal mean? How do I play? How do I play the wind? Yeah. How do I do it? Explain it to me, because there's so many people out there that have no idea. Mm-hmm. I mean, and we everybody just takes it for granted, because you know, not knocking any of the show, the hunting shows, but nobody is is educating. It's all entertainment, mm-hmm. right? It's all entertainment. There's no education. It's just entertainment. And where do where are these people getting their education from? 
because nobody reads magazines. Very few people read. Where, where is the where is the education? In my day, it was magazines, right? And I mean, where where are they getting education from? I mean, you you know everything's probably YouTube, you know. But is there a video out there that says how to play the wind while deer hunting? You know, I mean, I don't know. Maybe there is. Maybe there's somebody out there that's doing a bunch of how to videos. But I think there it like. You know, we had some people that come into the shop today. I'd almost bet them guys don't know what it means to play the wind. I bet you they don't know what a thermal is. I bet that they don't, they're not careful of entry and exit. But how much better of a bow hunter would they be if they knew that? Because I knew when I learned it, when, when, when it was told to me, it was like, it was a light switch. It was a light you'll, switch. You'll meet, you'll meet people in your life that have, that practice certain things when they're hunting. Yep. And, um, it it just it's, it's a light switch. It is. Man. It'll change the game for you. Yeah. Some of the tactics and and that's what happened to me. I grew up around these guys that you know we shot the old Indian tracker bows mm-hmm. and shot at this big giant blue styrofoam target. We didn't know yeah. what we was doing. Right. Oh. And right. I was just listening and never really learned from a lot of guys. I mean, I struggled up into my teens. Yeah. Struggled. Oh, so did I. I didn't shoot my first. I'd have to go back and think till my first good buck till i think 2001 mm-hmm. missed several i struggled and i thought i'm never gonna grasp this right and finally uh i believe it was around 2003 i'd met a couple guys down my way stone cold killers man mm-hmm. straight up got it done i'd heard of their names before and uh met up with them and i learned a whole bunch for those guys mm-hmm. and took took my hunting to to a different era to a different level right you know y'all been serious but before uh i heard about josh martin i heard about somebody else (laughs) eight dollar no heather martin (laughs) heather martin yeah (laughs) Yeah, who is josh martin who is josh martin (laughs) yeah heather Heather martin's husband i worked with josh and knew heather that's right (laughs) didn't know josh (laughs) what the heck how does it feel to be the husband of the the largest to the woman that's killed what the largest muzzleloader whitetail in the world correct mm-hmm. yeah. right in it, Grant what yeah. is it again yeah. the largest it's the record for the women's largest yeah. muzzleloader muzzleloader yeah uh-huh. I still think is it still hold the record uh it if it's been broken we're not aware of it I don't I don't think it has two twenty three three is what what are deer grossed listen to me he, yeah. he had a hard time saying that out yeah <laughs> 2041 two, two, it's it's positioned in their house to where he wakes up and he sees it every <laughs> single morning <laughs> no. that's the first thing no. he sees when that he wakes sucker's up. in the basement in a corner with a sheet over it <laughs> <laughs> oh look at that stupid thing uh but no that that's actually what uh you know what got me quote unquote into the industry was was that you know and uh you know you know, we all make fun of it. But wait a minute. Hold on. Grant, Grant, uh, Rachel's got, Rachel's killed the biggest animal in their family. Yeah. Oh, really? She got the biggest elk. Oh. Yeah. yeah. You know that black You've been bear. holding out on everybody. <laughs> I see yeah. how it is. Uh, that black bear used okay. to sit next to the elk. Uh, okay. Right? Yeah. Grant, and, and I got tired of people saying, man, elk's so awesome. Make this normal black bear. So I brought <laughs> it down here so it looks better. <laughs> Because everybody <laughs> looks at the elk. Yeah, uh, that's one thing I I I haven't yeah. killed a good a good bull, and that's like my bucket list, the top. You know, I'm, it used to be a mountain lion. I was fortunate enough to go to Idaho and 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 get my mountain lion, but now it's like I want to kill an elk bad, and I really want to go chase after one of them again. I can't wait. We're going. Yeah, Paradise Bay. Mm. We're going in June, and uh, turn around, come back home, and we're going Axis. Yes, Grant's been Grant. One of Grant's top bucket list has been an Axis deer in Texas. So we're going down there. Let's see, we're going we're going to Iowa. I, I'm going to Iowa. Then we're going to Mississippi. Neither one of us has ever deer hunted Mississippi. No, nope. got we got that coming up. We've got uh, obviously spring turkey season. Yep. We're going to hunt with. Um, help me out here. Triple H. Triple H Outfitters. Yeah, the in spring Kansas. should be hopping. Yep, and we're going to hunt with them. And we'll be in camp with Outdoor Dan Young. We'll be in camp with Philip Vanderpool and Larry McCoy from Respect the Game. Um, and then, so we're going to going on. To, uh, and then I'll be going to Tennessee again with Jeremiah Johnson hunting down there. He's a phenomenal hunter. I mean, a phenomenal. You talk about one of the guys that just know how to get it done. Yeah. He's one of them. Jeremiah Johnson is a uh, 
I mean, he's got like the coolest name in the world, but he's like, he <laughs> and he, he's got he, the coolest he, accent. He does have the coolest yeah. accent. He and he's just a good person. Mm-hmm. You know, he's just one of them guys when you meet, like that's a good dude. And you know? he does uh, have to check him out on YouTube. He does the Lone Bow Hunter. Lone Bow Hunter, mm-hmm. yes, yeah. yes. Check him out. I, I've watched several. He's of got his a lot videos. of good energy on his. He on does his stuff. Yeah, he does. He's just a good person, and uh, we need to get him on the podcast yeah. one time. We need just to, get, to hear his accent. Yeah, just, just to, to hear just, him talk. Just just talk. Just just talk, Jeremiah. <laughs> and uh, but we don't that, care what you talk about. Right, just talk. Just, just talk. <laughs> so then, we're, like like Grant said, we're going to uh, Texas for an axis hunt. That's <clears> one of uh, Grant's um, bucket list animals. So I'm yeah. looking very forward to that. Yeah. Um, going to Bear Dice. Uh, we got a lot of cool hunts. Now, yeah, that's one thing about it. You know, at the majority of people were whitetail freaks, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. But we. This is going to be a pretty fun year. Yep. We've got a lot of new we'll things coming up. out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, with you coming on board, now I'm kind of more motivated to go back and doing hunting again. Yep. Because I had that, you know, what few years ago I had that run where we did a lot. Yep. Yep. Shot a lot. Yep. Now, oh, everybody crazy. can get wore down over yeah, time. Yeah, Grant. Grant got it. Grant was fight, has been fighting a little burnout a little bit, but he's back in the game now. I he's think, like, where I are think, we going? Where are we going? What are we doing? I yeah. think everybody gets you get a little burnout oh, every once in a while. You oh, got to take a break sometimes. Hundred yeah. percent, man. About about six or seven years ago my well right before about from when i left tv to where the tv show i was with filming till before i started sick for the hunt probably about 2009 to 2012 man i didn't even want to see a camera or you nothing i mean t- you're on tv huh? <laughs> <laughs> remind me i need your autograph for and i was uh i was really really burnt out on the film and never got burnt a lot out of on it's the, the pressure yeah, a lot the of pressure. The pressure. Yep, yep. And I just wanted to walk to the stand without a camera. Yeah, you know, I just wanted to go sit and not have to. All right, I got to do my opening interview. I got to get this B roll shot. You know, um, never got burnt out on the hunting part, but just got burnt out on the filming part. But man, we've been going strong ever since we started sick for the hunt, and uh, we've got a lot of good things to come. Um, we've got an elk hunt too. We we do have an elk hunt, so I'm hoping this year it's be it's the elk. it's going to be real. It's the good thing about you know starting here on out <clears throat> in this coming year is yeah it's just going to be quick to the point. Yep. You know, fast, energetic hunts. We're gonna yep. you, you're going to learn from a lot of these hunts. We're going to have some really good product reviews. We'll throw some fishing in there too. Well, yep, you know we're going to yep. throw some tactics behind the pure copy line and yep. um, show some of the you guys are. I obviously I don't I'm not a big fisherman, <laughs> but you yep. guys are. When it comes to that, you guys know what you're doing and real successful at, um, at that. So we're going to dive into that and, uh, you know, show some people. I mean, if you guys are looking for a great guide, 1 800 Josh Martin Crossing. <laughs> no. Is that a call? No. And hey, I, he'll teach you everything about your life scope yeah. and you want to know. I, I love everybody, but man, I, I don't know if I want to go down. I've been asked a <laughs> lot to guide, but I don't really don't. And most of the, you know, it's not just ask the guy. To, it, the live scope thing is everybody wants to know how to live scope. Um, Garmin just come out. For those of you who don't know, Garmin come out with a with some, un, speaking of technology, where you can see the fish swimming under the water. I mean, it's it's absolutely insane. You can drop a bait on a fish's nose, and it is unbelievable technology. And that's I, that's where I get most of my messages from is, will you take me fishing to show me how to do this, you know, but it, it's, uh, but I think sick for the hunt, man, we're going to, it's going to be great. We're going to crop, we're going to show some crappie fishing. We're going to show some musky fishing, uh, and you know, a ton of hunting and, yeah. uh, a lot of education. I think it's going to be fantastic. Um, like, like I said, um, we're very, Grant and I are very, very excited about having Josh on board. And I, I think, um, uh, He's going to keep us straight. He's going to keep us lined out, make sure we do what we're supposed to be doing because Grant and I is going a million different directions. Uh, Nate keeps us straight over here on what we need to do for to run the businesses, and he keeps us straight there, and now Josh is going to keep us straight on Sick for the Hunt. So I think it's uh, 2023 is going to be an amazing year for Sick for the Hunt, and um, uh, it, it's going to show – Pretty quickly too. It's going to happen fast, yeah. I believe. Yeah. So yeah, you'll be able to catch us. <clears throat> we'll be doing podcasts for about, about two times a month, uh, every two, every other Tuesday, and um, put out some good information. Yep. Have so so what? Yeah. So yeah. We're, yeah. I'm glad you brought that up, Grant. So uh, if you guys have any ideas of who we need to talk to, who you would like to hear from, absolutely. Uh, interview. Uh, you know, if you want 
uh, to bring them on the pod. If you think we should bring them on the podcast, if you have any ideas about subject matter that you want to that you want us to talk about, um, especially on the hunting side of stuff, uh, by all means, you know, throw us a throw us a message. How would you like people to contact Just, you? Josh? You can you can reach out to any of us through you know private message. You can hit us up on Facebook. Uh, you can hit us up through our email. You know, they'll be, those will be available. Uh, you can you can message us so many different ways through Sick for the Hunt uh, Instagram message through Facebook. You can reach us reach out to us through our email and uh, just give us a shout out. Let us know who you'd like to see. If you got some fresh ideas, if you know of a local legend that is low key that you know uh, a lot that'd about, awesome. that'd be awesome. We want to hear from those local legends. That would you know, be awesome. That's <clears throat> those. There's some low key guys out there that's sitting around with a lot of intel, with a lot of information, and if they're willing to come on board. And, and uh, mm-hmm. I think I think that would be really good. But, yeah, we're interested in hearing from all you guys and what you want to see. Cool. And uh, we're anxious to bring it to you guys. You can catch us on uh, all avenues where all podcasts are available. You can catch the video um, on our Sick for the Hunt YouTube channel. And there will probably be some new platforms down the road uh, as we get this boat rolling. Awesome. Awesome. So, so, what do we got to look forward to, Josh? What's the first episode? <laughs> On Ooh. spot. Ooh. Ooh. I don't know. Yeah, no pressure. I don't know. We got a lot of content coming out January one. Okay. It's a lot of um, a lot of stuff. Awesome. We've got. I, I don't know. I'm I'm interested. In maybe seeing Josh Martin shirtless in his baronet <laughs> blind. <laughs> Wow! Hey, that'll heat things up. And you've never weather, seen <laughs> Josh Martin hatless and shirtless at the same time. Yeah, it, we it, might it, just go ahead and kick it off with a bang. With that, hey, one. let me tell you something, boys and girls. Grant, back me up on this. How hot was in blinds that weekend? Oh boy, it was hot. It was. I mean, was it one twenty? You think with the humidity? Oh, I'd say so. It was hot. Yep. I mean, I was sweating. Oh, it was bad. I mean, I, did, I, I didn't strip down like you did, but I. I, I couldn't help I, t- it, I just took it. It was bad. It's going to be fun. I think we'll probably do that one first. It's going to be raw. It's going to be uncut. Uh, it's going to be totally different. You know, what, yeah. You know, it's you're, it's going to be different. I think you guys are going to really enjoy it. But uh, we might put that one out there and just start off with a bang. You know, it, that one. You I like – You need to make it a picture, you know, when they go across the video where it's Josh with no shirt on. We might yeah. get more views out of that. <laughs> Hey, and, and I'm I'm glad Josh said it'll be different. You know, you're going to see us. Uh, oh, one other thing for everybody who likes duck hunting. We just went on a duck hunt to mm-hmm. Real Foot Lake in Tennessee. Great footage. I think you guys will like that. We had uh, – didn't kill a lot of ducks, but we had a good time, and we made it fun, as like we always try to do. Uh, but we – so we do duck have – Duck hunters are soft. <laughs> well, the way we done it, they are. The but, dudes that are laying out in the field in a blind, they're tough, but – the ones that only duck hunt like we just did was it was bad. It was terrible. We were. We, I mean, I shouldn't say terrible. It was pretty nice. It was amazing. What, what movie? How many movies did you watch? I think I watched three. I watched. I listen. Listen. Let me tell you something. When the action was slow, I caught myself eating a plate of crappies and French fries, standing by the fireplace, watching Christmas Vacation in a duck blind. No joke. I'm done. <laughs> Yeah, no joke. I'm not. I'm <laughs> literally kind of, not kidding. <laughs> what kind of duck blind has a uh, fireplace hey, and a TV? And Nate's back you. here working his butt off. Hey, I was. I'm telling you, and freezing in freezing conditions. I knew you was going to say that. Yeah. I had yeah. a feeling it was cold. I know. Yeah. I had a feeling. Hey, we, we have we have heaters here. <laughs> they didn't bring you nothing back either, did they? No, we that's it. some well, guys. We let Scott right. take it. That's that's yeah. that's some some guys. So Scott's are. got my duck. I'll get it Thursday then. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean we got something for everybody on Sick for the Hunt. It's not just going to be whitetails. It's not going to be just you know this. It's not going to be just that. We're going to broaden our horizons. Talk about a lot of different things. Bear, elk, mule. Me and Grant are both addicted. to We got to bring bear. the turkey whisper fiskajon on here. Yeah. If yeah. there's anybody in the United States or this country that's self filmed and knows about turkeys, it's that guy. He's yep. unreal. Yep. I mean, there's nothing with, <laughs> with a bow. With a bow. With a bow. This dude. Yep. Pure animal. You guys will be yep. interested in talking to Justin when he gets yep. on. It'll be nice. Yep. So, all right, man. I think that's about all we got for this episode. Thanks, Josh. Welcome to Sick for the Hunt. Welcome to Pure Whitetail. We are 100% glad you're here. Um, it's going to be a good year. It's going to be a great year. It'll be a good year yep. and uh, anxious for it, guys. Yep. 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 Grant, what you got? Anything? Anything? It's Nate crazy Dollar? and fun. Crazy and fun. That's right. <laughs> Nate, Nate, Nate what D, what you got? Anything? No. 
I guess with that, we're going to close out the first podcast of Sick for the Hunt. Uh, Come back for the next one. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you. See you next time. Yep. Awesome. Look at that.